Self-Help was founded in 1936 to help people who were fleeing Nazi persecution. When survivors first arrived, they were in need of food, shelter, housing, all of the basic necessities that they had left behind. Self-Help was there to provide those. And today we continue to serve the Holocaust survivor population with the promise to be the last surviving relative, while we have expanded to serve a much broader population, reflecting the seniors who live in the communities we serve. At Self-Help, we talk at policy levels, statistical levels. What's missing when you're looking at metrics is the compassion and the trust that is developed between our wonderful staff and our clients. It's hard to measure how a social worker's touch impacts the life of a Holocaust survivor. It's hard to measure the trust that needs to be developed that enables somebody to assist with everyday living. Self-help staff is trained, sensitive, and compassionate, and they are there every day taking care of 20,000 clients, one person at a time. What's most important is what you will see in this video the behind the scenes work of our staff with our clients. I invite you to join us and see the smiles that we put on clients' faces. I'm a Holocaust survivor. I lost my wife. I lost everything what we got. I have a room and I have only one bed. If I want to put a small chair, one square foot, no place. I went to his home and saw that he was living in a tiny bedroom, all of his clothing all over his bed. There were probably five or six people living in this apartment in the living room. Mr. Potapovsky has been through a horrendous experience. We needed to build and establish trust. He needed me reassuring him that you wholeheartedly deserve to get this apartment and we're going to make sure that that happens for you. I can't believe it. this. When I come to the apartment, I think this is a dream. And I try to touch myself. This is not a dream. They treat me like I am a father to them. They have a heart like that. He has made more connections with people. He's not alone anymore. I feel very safe. It's, it's amazing. Thank you so much. Self-help. Miss Dong has a heart condition and one of her main goals was to get a home attendant and we worked together to secure that home care service. They can socialize with other seniors and the wife can have the good care with the home care service and other workers can help her. They really find a place that they can call home. I was very upset. My daughter came and she told me, she said, you have to, you have to move. Somebody's going to come in and give you the, the eviction. Mrs. Luna's daughter, Adriana, had reached out for assistance. She was desperate to find affordable housing for her mother or she would end up having to live in an institutional-like setting. The social worker came in and she gave me a peace of mind. I feel back again myself. When Miss Luna was able to have this beautiful apartment, the summary was sent to Sima, social worker from housing, and she was able to know more about my client. If we didn't have self-help in my mother's life, my mother would have been homeless. I wouldn't know what to do. To me, it's like a miracle story. It's our responsibility to take care of the elderly. All the services that self-help provides 
are all about creating a home, a safe place for them to live out their, their final years. We have a responsibility to make sure that the end years are filled with dignity and safety and we should rally around them. Self-help is constantly looking to continue its mission but innovate in the way it does it. And I think by doing that, they're able to expand the different people that they touch. It's really extraordinary to have an organization that's been around for so long be able to have that youthful strive to improve. That energy flows through the entire organization. There's a difference between a house and a home. A house suggests just walls and utility. Home means that it's close to your heart, close to your spirit. It's, it's where you want to be. We have to rethink what does it mean aging and how to create a environment that is not only sustainable but enhances that there is a meaning to life. Affordable housing is the platform for services. It serves as the alternative to institutionalization. It keeps people out of nursing homes. It lowers hospitalizations, emergency room visits. When we provide services within housing, people live freely, they live independently. They are comfortable living in the community that they call home.